All right, so let's get started. Good evening, everybody. Um, if uh, if you can hear me, uh, just to make sure that you all are, um, I'm up and running, would you mind just putting into the chat uh, functionality here that you're able to hear me all right? Great, thank you, Louisa. Um, okay, so good evening. Um, <laughs> welcome to tonight's presentation, Orientation for New Fiscally Sponsored Projects. My name is Colleen Hughes, and I am a program associate here at Fractured Atlas. Uh, thank you for taking the time to attend tonight's webinar. We really appreciate having proactive members who go out of their way to learn about our program policies and procedures before they dive headfirst into their fundraising. Uh, tonight's webinar will be recorded, so don't feel pressured to jot down copious amounts of notes. We will definitely send you the link to the recording later this week, which you're welcome to share with anyone who you think might be interested. Um, there will also be an opportunity for questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free to chat me throughout as well. Uh, if it's relevant, I'll try to answer your question as I go. Otherwise, I will save it for later. All right, so in the last 12 months, our fiscally sponsored projects have raised more than $23 million. Fractured Atlas's fiscal sponsorship program extends some of the benefits of our 501c3 status to artists and arts organizations so that they can solicit tax deductible donations from individuals and institutional funding, which would otherwise only be available to nonprofits. So currently we have more than 4,000 artists and arts organizations who are fiscally sponsored by Fractured Atlas. They're producing either one-off discrete projects like a single film or a dance production, or we're sponsoring them for their ongoing artistic activities like a startup theater company or the work in progress of a visual artist. Fractured Atlas has the largest fiscal sponsorship program uh, in the nonprofit arts sector and how many Fractured Atlas staff members administer this program? Only nine. That's right, we're able to administer uh, the largest arts fiscal sponsorship program in the country with a lean staff of nine individuals who also support our members using our other programs. So when you give us a call or shoot us an email, you could be working with any one of us at any given time, depending upon the nature of your inquiry. So a little bit about myself, as I mentioned, my name is Colleen uh, and I'm a program associate here at Fractured Atlas. I've been working at Fractured Atlas for about a year and a half now. Um, I come from a nonprofit arts background and I also direct and produce theater in my free time. Uh, it's nice to meet all of you. Okay, so the way that we're able to run a program of this size so smoothly and efficiently is that we have custom built online tools that allow for much of our program to be automated. And there's a great deal of functionality at your fingertips that allows you to control a large portion of your fundraising activities. The purpose of today's presentation is to show you a path forward with your fiscal sponsorship program uh, by giving you a tour of what's available to you on our website and to outline some of our program policies and procedures. So once our board of directors approves your project for the program, you'll be able to log into our website and access your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. This is your primary portal for interacting with the program. We're going to talk through some of the features of this page as well as our program policies. Um, there's no substitute for hands-on learning and we can't possibly cover everything in this presentation, so I definitely encourage you to thoroughly explore this page on our website and read through the program policies and procedures which are available in our knowledge base as your first steps on your setup with fiscal sponsorship. So one of the first things to understand about our fiscal sponsorship program is that it makes the distinction between earned and contributed revenue. So earned revenue refers to any funds given in exchange for a good or a service. This is usually known as a purchase or a fee for service and is not considered tax deductible. Contributed revenue is any amount of money given without the expectation of receiving anything thing in exchange. So this is usually a donation or a grant in which a donor gives an amount of money to support your work but does not get anything in return. Contributed revenue is generally considered tax deductible. So earned revenue needs to be made payable directly to you. We do not process earned revenue for the purposes of our fiscally sponsored projects. Fractured Atlas can only accept contributed revenue for the purposes of our fiscally sponsored projects. 
Um, now we do accept projects that have for-profit investors, though we cannot process private investments or equity. So there's an addendum that we ask projects to sign if they are expecting for-profit investors, and we only process charitable donations from individuals or institutions for the purposes of our sponsored projects. So we can help you process donations or contributed revenue in three different ways. First of all, by debit or credit card on our website or on a crowdfunding campaign. Secondly, donations made by checks payable to Fractured Atlas. And finally, non-cash donations of goods made in kind to the charitable purposes of your project. We will talk more about non-cash donations later. So each of our fiscally sponsored projects has a donation landing page on our website where they can direct donors who want to contribute by debit or credit card. We can accept credit card donations up to $20,000 per transaction. If you have the enviable problem of knowing a donor who wants to contribute more than $20,000 and charge it to their credit card, you'll just need to ask them to do so over multiple charges and have them wait about five or 10 minutes between transactions so that our system doesn't think it's a duplicate donation made by mistake. Donors who contribute by credit card are required to provide an email address and we automatically send them a receipt. Um, please note, you are prohibited from collecting credit card information from your donors and entering it into our website on your own. Donors must input their own debit or credit card info um, into Fractured Atlas to process a donation, uh, or they can contact us and we can do it over the phone. This opens up to us up to some liability issues as you, a sponsored project, are not actually authorized to use our credit card processor in this way. So no collecting credit card information. Um, your donation landing page is a public facing page on our website where you should put content that you want potential donors to see. This can be an image or a YouTube or Vimeo video along with a brief description of your project or what your current activities are. You can edit your sponsored projects online profile on your our website through your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the online profile button. When you submit changes, an automated email will go to a member of our staff asking for review and approval before it goes live on the website. We typically turn this around in one to two business days and will either approve the changes outright or be in touch with you directly via email if we have any questions about the new material that you're putting up on your profile. We can also accept check donations that are made payable to Fractured Atlas. You're welcome to have donors write your name or the name of your sponsored project in the memo line, but this isn't entirely necessary because we ask that your donors actually mail the check to you first. Once you receive the donation checks from your donors, you'll then report the donations made by check on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the donations heading. Here is where you'll create the donor record for check contributions. You'll provide the donor's name, contact information, and other info available to you from their check before forwarding on to us for processing and deposit. You'd be surprised uh, how many unreported checks arrive at our offices. Uh, we end up spending a lot of time doing detective work to figure out which of our fiscally sponsored projects they are recommended for. We often have to mail unreported checks back to the donor or back to you as it is crucial that we receive this information uh, in advance. So to recap, your donors will send the check contribution to you first. You will submit the donation report on your website and then forward the checks onto us for processing and depositing. You will uh, be sent an email notification once the donation is processed with a copy of the receipt to forward onto your donor with your thanks. Uh, and I see we have a quick question. Yes, so to confirm, the checks need to be made payable to Fractured Atlas, not to you or your project. Um, thank you for double checking. So we can uh, accept d check donations of any size, but those donations of $2,500 or more are required to have an extra piece of documentation, the major gift letter. The major gift letter is a simple form letter that's available to download from your My Fiscal Sponsorship page for your donor to complete and sign. You're able to upload the major gift letter as an attachment to the donation report, but it's not required and can also be emailed or mailed to us at any time. 
feel free to send us the check to process before you receive the major gift letter if you aren't able to obtain both at the same time. We're happy to process reported checks of $2,500 or more without a major gift letter, but these donated funds will not be made available to you until we are in receipt of a signed and completed letter. As a nonprofit, we're required to submit ourselves to an annual internal audit during which our auditors look for this extra verification of the donor's intent to donate to Fractured Atlas in support of your project. Uh, so that's why we need it. It's a very important piece of documentation. So there are a couple of different types of monetary donations that we cannot accept. Cash and money orders. In order for us to issue a tax receipt, we need to be able to directly link money back to specific individuals or entities. A credit card transaction or a check with the donor's bank account and routing numbers on it provides that direct link. Because cash and money orders are not specific to an individual's financial institution or bank account, they do not provide that paper trail back to the donor. You're welcome to accept cash or money orders directly from donors uh, who do not need a tax receipt for their contribution. However, if they want a tax receipt, instruct them to contribute via debit or credit card on our website or by check made payable to Fractured Atlas. We can, however, help you accept non-cash or in-kind donations. These donations must be physical, tangible items that you can touch with your hands, the ownership of which is fully donated over to your project. So let's unpack that a little further. We can only process donations of physical, tangible items. So they need to exist in the real world and you can touch them with your hands. Donations of a person's time or services are not considered by the S to be IRS, excuse me, to be a charitable tax deductible donation. So if a restaurant donates food or beverages to you, they can get a receipt for those items, but if they donate their catering services, they cannot get a tax receipt that includes their contributed time. We can, however, accept gift cards or gift certificates from businesses that otherwise sell these items. In order to be tax deductible, non-cash donations need to be fully donated over for the charitable purposes of your sponsored project. So donations of rent or rental items wouldn't count. If someone gives you equipment for free that they would normally charge a rental fee for and you need to return the items when you're done, that's really more of a loan even if they're waiving the rental fee. Similarly, donated space rentals would not count as tax deductible as you're not being given what the IRS calls, quote, full interest in the property. In other words, if you have to give it back, it is not considered a donation. Finally, we cannot accept donations of donated airfare, air miles, or automobiles. So as with check donations, you'll need to report non-cash donations on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the donations heading. This is where you will also find your non-cash donation letter. The non-cash donation letter is another simple form for the donor to fill out where they provide a description and value the items that they are contributing. You can then upload the non-cash donation letter to the donation report when you submit it through your My Fiscal Sponsorship page for non-cash donations valued at $250 or more, we will require a photograph of the donated item or items. So be sure to take that photo as soon as you receive the donation, especially if it is donated food or beverage. With all donations that we process for the purposes of our fiscally sponsored projects, we deduct an administrative fee to cover the costs of running this program. Our administrative fee pays for our website maintenance, our staff time, and things like credit card processing and bank fees. The fee starts at 7%, but as you raise more money, the fee is lowered on check donations. So the breakdown looks like this. If you raise $150,000 or more over the lifetime of your fiscal sponsorship, the administrative fee on check donations goes down to 6%. At $500,000 or more, it is reduced to 5%. And if you raise a million dollars or more, the fee goes down to 4%. And we have had projects raise at least that much money over the their time with us. The fee does remain at 7% for credit card donations as the processing fee that we incur does not change. We do also charge a fee on the stated value of donated non-cash items, and you can either have us charge this fee to your credit card on file or have us deduct it from your project's available fund balance. 
You can also check your fund balance on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Info slash Reports heading. But maybe we're going a little too fast and should take a step back because before we even start processing donations, how do we actually get people to consider making a contribution to us? Well, we got to ask. <laughs> this is often the first hurdle that budding artists entrepreneurs encounter. Every day we talk to artists or art startups who experience an initial queasiness about actually asking people for money. If this sounds like you, consider yourself in good company. All nonprofit artistic ventures in the United States require a philanthropic support to keep in operation. That goes for the Metropolitan Opera in New York or the Getty Museum in LA. Do not consider it panhandling or begging, consider it an offer. You're offering potential patrons an opportunity to get involved with something bigger than themselves. And with fiscal sponsorship, you're also offering them tax deductibility as well. As soon as you're approved for fiscal sponsorship, we recommend that you send out an appeal asking for people to make a contribution and to let them know that their donation will now be tax deductible. So some different ideas, you can send an email blast, a snail mail campaign, a newsletter, put it up on your website, host a fundraising event, run a crowdfunding campaign. Um, you should consider all of them at some point as part of your larger fundraising strategy. We do have an individual appeal letter template, among other fundraising templates, available for you to take a look at on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Crafting a good letter is more than just plugging your info into a formula and pressing send, so I would strongly encourage you to use these templates as a way to kickstart your brainstorming about the letter that you ultimately want to send out. But before you send out your appeal to potential donors, please send us a copy first for our review and approval. You can email your fundraising materials to support at fracturedatlas.org. A good rule of thumb is that anytime you mention Fractured Atlas or promise donors tax deductibility, you should run it by us first before sending it out. We require that you do this for a couple different reasons. First off, it's definitely in your best interest to have another experienced pair of eyes that take a look at what you're about to send out. At this point, I've probably reviewed around hundreds of donor solicitations and have a pretty good idea of what a successful, well-presented appeal letter looks like. We can offer you some tips and tools to potentially maximize the effectiveness of your fundraising materials. So we definitely provide feedback where appropriate. But we are also looking to see that you're correctly representing the fiscal sponsorship relationship. To that end, we've crafted some standard text that we require you to include with your donor solicitation materials. This can be found in our knowledge base. It's just a quick two sentence paragraph that succinctly summarizes the fiscal sponsorship relationship. You're welcome to include it as fine print at the bottom of your materials, but it must be in there somewhere. We're also looking to see that you're offering what you're offering donors in exchange for their contribution. For example, advertising space. Unfortunately, you're not permitted to sell ad space through your fiscal sponsorship or give it away as an incentive in exchange for a donation. You are, however, allowed to offer corporate sponsorship in exchange. So what's the difference? Well, it has to do with who maintains control over the content and placement of the content. If your contributor has control over what will be listed in your materials and or if you are in some way endorsing their products or services, this is considered advertising. If you maintain control over the content and you're not endorsing their products or services, this is considered corporate sponsorship. Typically, corporate sponsorship comes in the way of a logo or name placement on your website or other materials. Frequently, this will be posted as a thank you or an in recognition of the sponsor. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to a member of our staff and we'll be happy to assist. Other things we might be looking for, are you running a raffle? Well, this might be a good idea, but unfortunately you're prohibited from running it through your fiscal sponsorship with us. This means you cannot award donors raffle tickets in exchange for a tax deductible donation. Raffles are considered a form of gambling, uh, which is actually regulated at the state level. So unfortunately it's not something that Fractured Atlas can get involved with. Whenever you offer donors rewards of goods or services in exchange for their contribution, this makes their donation partially deductible above and beyond the fair market value of the rewards that they are receiving. 
So some examples of this. If your donor receives a ticket, excuse me, a t-shirt valued at $20 in exchange for a $100 donation, $90 of that donation is tax deductible. Also, if your donor is receiving a $20 ticket in exchange for a $150 donation, then $130 of that donation is considered tax deductible. We need donations to be at least partially tax deductible. You wouldn't be able to offer donors rewards of equal or greater value to that amount that they are contributing. Such an exchange no longer becomes contributed revenue and is actually considered a purchase and therefore earned revenue, which we cannot process. One place where partially deduct partial deductibility often comes into play is with a crowdfunding campaign. Frequently, fundraisers will offer rewards in exchange for donations through their campaigns. We do have a platform available for our fiscally sponsored projects, which allows for you to run a crowdfunding campaign and still offer your donors a tax receipt. This includes the ability for you to set up rewards with a fair market value attached so we can issue accurate receipts to your donors. In the year 2018, it's very likely that you've heard of crowdfunding and have even supported campaigns yourself, so I'm sure you know what it is. We do encourage our projects to run a campaign at least once as part of their overall fundraising strategy, and our platform is called Fundraising by Fractured Atlas. Alternately, if you don't want to run a crowdfunding campaign or if you want to offer giving levels to donors on an ongoing basis, you can add some to your donation landing page on our website. From the My Fiscal Sponsorship page, you'll simply click the donations button and then giving levels. Your donors will then be presented with options on our website for different giving levels that they can contribute at. And if you want to offer donors rewards, their online debit or credit card donation can be partially tax deductible. Fiscal sponsorship can also open the door to institutional funding, like from foundations or corporations. As with approvals of your individual solicitations and crowdfunding campaigns, we want to be involved when you, get, when you apply for grants and uh, these resources. So before you start looking at grants, however, you should be aware of our grant eligibility requirement. We require that projects raise at least $1,000 before they are eligible to apply for grants through us. If you can show that you've raised $1,000 through contributed, not earned income, we may be able to waive that requirement. Secondly, please be aware of our review requirements. If you've met the grant eligibility requirement and would like to apply for a grant through Fractured Atlas, all of your grant uh, application materials must be reviewed and approved by a Fractured Atlas staff member before they're submitted. So keep in mind that we require these materials to be submitted to us for review at least 10 business days before the grant deadline, and if we receive them within less time than that, the review may be subject to a rush fee. Finally, depending on the actual grant opportunity, Fractured Atlas may even need to be the applicant of record, which is another reason why we need to review all materials before they are submitted. Okay, so now that you've successfully solicited donations and had patrons donate to your fiscally sponsored project, what's next? How do you actually access these donated funds? Well, first you'll need to send us the information for your checking account, which you can do by downloading the sign-up form for Electronic Funds Transfer, or EFT, from your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Fund Releases heading. We strongly recommend that you have a separate account for your project's finances from your personal finances. This doesn't have to be a business bank account, but it can be uh, you know, a separate personal checking account. Here's what the EFT form looks like. Pretty simple to complete. You can send us the completed form with a voided check in one of three ways. You can either scan and email it to support at fracturedapolis.org. You can fax it to 212-277-8025, or you can snail mail it to us. All of our contact information is available on our website and also on the EFT form. We require a voided check, bank statement, confirmation letter from the bank, or bank-issued direct deposit form so that we can substantiate the account holder's name, account number, and routing numbers. Once we've received your checking account information, you'll be able to submit a fund release request through our website. We hold all donations for seven days after we process them to make sure that the check doesn't bounce or the credit card charge isn't disputed. Then after those seven days, donated funds are available for you to request. 
unless we are waiting on a major gift letter for a check donation of $2,500 or more. We're happy to hold on to donated funds for as long as you need us to, provided that you remain a dues paying member of Fractured Atlas with an active fiscally sponsored project. And then we'll release them to you when you have project related expenses. We do not automatically transfer funds to our projects. Uh, as a fiscal sponsor, we need to demonstrate that we maintain a certain degree of discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. Um, the fund release request process is a control in place to make sure that fiscally sponsored projects are using funds in alignment with our charitable mission. When you submit a fund release request, you'll let us know how much you need and how you'll be spending the money uh, using some pretty broad expense category budget line items. So you can say, for instance, that $1,000 is for public relations and $500 is for space rental. Um, there is an other expense category, but as a helpful hint, we almost never let anyone use other as an explanation for their expenses. Almost 100% of the time, your expenses will fit into one of the categories provided. So if you have any questions about which line item to use for your specific expense, feel free to ask our staff. One thing that you're not allowed to do is re-grant funds raised through our program to another individual or entity without strings attached. The best use of fiscal sponsorship is to raise money to spend on expenditures related to the art that you're creating or the service that you're providing. And this can include paying people a salary or a stipend for their time, but you're not able to award grants or prizes through fiscal sponsorship uh, or to other ent entities. For particularly large fund release requests, we will ask for backup documentation to substantiate the expenses. This serves as an additional way that we provide oversight for funds raised through our program. Documentation can be in the form of receipts, signed agreements and invoices, quotes. For example, if you're going to reimburse uh, yourself or a collaborator for an expense paid out of pocket, we'd wanna see a receipt showing for what was purchased and how much cost. If you're planning to pay an artist for their time spent working on the project, we want to see a signed invoice or an agreement outlining what services were provided and how much the artist is going to be paid. Specifically, documentation will be required for all requests of $5,000, but we do reserve the right to ask for documentation for any requested amount and may ask for documentation at least once for larger requests that are less than $5,000. We're happy to be flexible though. If you're purchasing something online and can't provide a quote, you can send us a screenshot of the item that you plan to purchase. If you don't have a signed agreement with your collaborator, forward us an email conversation in which you agree that to the services that will be rendered and the amount to be paid to the artist. Ultimately, we're just looking for some sort of agreement between you and your vendor or collaborator that outlines what goods or services will be exchanged and how much will be paid for them. Ultimately, you'll need all of this documentation when you file your taxes, so the fund release process can really help you keep them in order. Speaking of taxes, <laughs> when you apply for fiscal sponsorship, you may recall that there were they that you were asked for, to provide a legal entity with a US taxpayer ID. This is either an individual with their social security number or a business ent entity with its employer identification number or EIN. We can work with any type of legal entity, uh, either an individual, sole proprietor, an LLC, a corporation, an informal group, etc. We ask for this because funds dispersed through our fiscal sponsorship program are reported as taxable income to the legal entity in the form of a grant. Each January, we issue a 1099 miscellaneous to individuals, sole proprietors, partnerships, and LLCs showing funds dispersed the previous calendar year to file with their other tax documents. The funds will be listed as box three, other, or grant income. Corporations are not issued 1099s, but they will still need to report fractured atlas income on their tax documents. That said, you should not necessarily have to pay uh, income tax on Fractured Atlas fund releases. Because we only release funds to you when you request it for the use on specific project related expenses, you should be able to offset the income on your taxes using the expenses that the funds paid for. We really strongly recommend that you work with an accountant um, to file and keep careful document documentation of your expenditures. Uh, it's really just gonna save you a lot of trouble at the end of the year. 
An important thing to keep in mind is that your project is a separate business entity from Fractured Atlas. One of the great aspects of this is that you maintain complete ownership over the work that you create, but we do not grant you your own 501c3 status. Only the IRS can do that. Rather, we are extending some of the benefits of our nonprofit status to the projects that we sponsor. To that extent, we will want you to check in with us on a few things, primarily the use of our tax ID. I'm sure if a friend of yours asked for your social security number, you'd be curious about why. In the same way, anytime you encounter a situation that requires our EIN, please let us know so that we can advise on its usage. We're happy to provide sponsorship confirmation letters uh, to uh, specific potential donors or sponsors to help grease the wheels, but we cannot provide a one-size-fits-all um, confirmation document with our EIN as we want to be involved with each and every time someone is requesting our info. So just email us at support at fracturedatlas.org. We're not able to help set up a bank account using our EIN, so any account that you create needs to be set up in your own name with your own tax ID. So don't sign up for anything that requires our name or tax ID without running it by us first. We can also provide a letter to help you obtain nonprofit rates from vendors that offer them. It's ultimately up to the vendor if they uh, want to provide you with uh, the rate as a fiscally sponsored project, but most are willing to. This is especially helpful with space rentals. If the venue offers a non-profit rate, we can usually help you get a discount. Again, just shoot us an email and we'll send you a letter. Nonprofit rates do not apply to bulk postage for your mailings. This is something that you would only have access to if you had your own 501c3 status. So we're not able to help you with sales tax exemption as well um, because our lawyers have advised us not to since we cannot provide oversight over the purchase or rental of the item. So the final major fiscal sponsorship uh, policy to bring your attention to is our annual report. For any fiscally sponsored projects that either processed donations or requested fund releases in a given calendar year, we're going to require that you submit to us an annual report updating us on your activities. The report is due on April 1st and then we'll send out three reminders starting at the beginning of the year. If you don't complete the report by April 1st, we will freeze your project, but it's relatively simple to unfreeze your fiscal sponsorship. All you got to do is submit the report and then email us to let us know. You can access your annual report on the My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the info slash reports button. The report is entirely online, so you don't have to prepare anything ahead of time. It has two major components. The first is that we ask you to provide a brief narrative description of what you accomplished the previous calendar year. This can be as detailed as you like, although we would prefer that you keep it relatively brief so it doesn't take us too, too long to review. With the narrative, uh, you provide a numerical impact for your work to show how many people were exposed to your work and how many artists participated. We will also ask for updated financials. Because we only process contributed revenue for your fiscally sponsored project, we're only aware of income and expenditures relating to the funds that we've handled. So the annual report is an opportunity to tell us about other funds handled separately from the program, where they came from and how they were spent. Also, if you've changed how any funds released through your program were spent, like if you said that $1,000 was going to be used for transportation, but you ended up spending it on utilities, this is the place to let us know so that we can better adjust our own books. The annual report is another important way that we demonstrate the discretion and control over how funds raised through our program are used. But it's also a way for us to collect data about the artists and arts organizations that we serve so that we can better understand our own impact in the nonprofit arts sector in the United States. The more accurately you can provide your data, the more complete our picture is for the kind of business our sponsored projects are able to do in their own communities. Whew. So I'm going to open it up for questions momentarily. Um, I hope you've gotten a sense for how easy our fiscal sponsorship is to use and how much power you have at your fingertips through the online tools available on our website. Um, I would also encourage you once again to really thoroughly explore your My Fiscal Sponsorship page and our program manual and knowledge base for a more comprehensive overview of all of our program policies and procedures. 
Um, but before I officially open it up for questions, I'm going to quickly introduce you to Fractured Atlas's other programs and services. Artfully. So Artfully is an online system to manage your tickets, donations, and contacts. It's a simple, elegant way to keep track of events, people, and your everyday work. You can sell tickets uh, on your site or through an Artfully storefront and provide ticket buyers and donors with automatic email receipts, among other things, to manage uh, tickets and patrons. Artfully works with fiscally sponsored projects as well, so you can track your donors and other fans in the same place. It's a great way to start understanding your audit audience, managing your segments, and organizing your communications. It's a very powerful tool. Our next program is Space Finder. Uh, Space Finder is an online marketplace that matches renters with venues that meet their unique needs. For artists, the process of finding workspace can be really frustrating and inefficient. Meanwhile, venues have limited resources to spend on finding new renters. Earned revenue is really critical for creative venues, yet many rental spaces are tragically underutilized. Through the Space Finder program, Fractured Atlas is increasingly increasing visibility, excuse me, of rental op options, helping artists find the space they need and helping venues promote and rent their spaces. There are over 5,000 spaces listed and 554,000 searches for space every year. There are also $800,000 or more of annual rental referrals to participating creative ven venues. Space Finder is available and are coming soon to all of the locations listed here. So thanks to the combined purchasing power of the Fractured Atlas community, our members have access to our other program, our insurance program, which is high quality coverage for much lower rates than would otherwise be possible. Uh, more importantly, with one foot in the arts and another in the world of insurance, we've worked with some of the world's leading insurance companies to design a number of proprietary insurance programs that are especially tailored to meet your specific needs. We've even made the process as quick and painless as possible. All right, so I think it's about time that I open it up for questions. Um, I'm looking at both the chat and the Q&A, so feel free to go ahead and add those. Mm, great question. So the first question I see is, does Fractured Atlas help fiscally sponsor projects to find donors? Uh, we do not. So we are not going to be prospecting donors for our projects. Um, we don't seek out grant opportunities either. It is ultimately up to the projects to find their donor base and find their funding opportunities. Uh, we're really here to support and to provide you with the tools um, to uh, accept and um, process those donations. Mm, okay, so I see the next question is, do you accept international donors? Um, so we, we can, first of all, I'm gonna say we can only accept donations in US dollars. Um, that being said, if someone wants to make a credit card donation from overseas, uh, we can absolutely accept that. Our credit card processor will process it, but again, it's only gonna be in US dollars. Um, okay, I'm going to skip over to the Q&A. Great. What are your requirements for using your logo, logo i.e. in marketing materials, Facebook, etc.? So we have a, a different varieties, sizes of our logo on our website, on our My Fiscal Sponsorship page, once you're approved. Um, you're welcome to use it. Uh, I would say whenever you're really using the logo, I would assume you're going to be talking about fiscal sponsorship and tax deductibility. So be sure to use the standard text at the same time. Um, and also keep in mind that we're going to need to reveal, excuse me, review any appeals. So if it's marketing materials, we are also going to need to review that as well. Um, can data arts funder reports be used and accepted by Fractured Atlas as an annual report? So our annual report is an independent form on our website. Um, so uh, we the, that report is going to need to be um, submitted as the annual report. Unfortunately, we aren't able to accept any other formats. It's got to go through our own website. Um, okay. 
Okay, so I have a question here about insurance. I am wanting to apply for another fiscally sponsored project. Would I need to get separate insurance policies for both? Um, so for that, unfortunately, I wouldn't be the best person to answer that question. I would recommend that you contact our brokers. Um, they're called Locked In Affinity. Um, and uh, they, um, their information is on our website. It's gonna be Fractured Atlas. Um, insurance.org and uh, they'll be able to help you out. So I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer that one. Um, do we ever release funds directly to vendors or contractors? No, we do not ever release funds directly to vendors or contractors. The funds are only released to the bank account on file. Um, and then it is ultimately up to you to pay your vendors, pay your artists or your contractors. Okay. Um, I have a question here about uh, pay what you like tickets. Um, so pay what you like tickets. Uh, so that would not go through the fiscal sponsorship program. It would go through Artfully. Artfully doesn't currently have the functionality to do traditional pay what you like tickets um, in that uh, it doesn't have the functionality for folks to type in their own uh, ticket amount, but we do have folks who basically offer a tiered ticket type and then people can opt into that. So that's how our uh, users are able to uh, offer the pay what you like option for tickets. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, I see a, a big question here that I'm happy to um, kind of uh, pipe up on. So it says, what are the advantages of using Fractured Atlas for fundraising campaigns apart from tax deductibility? Um, so I would say tax deductibility is probably number one. That's the uh, biggest um, advantage that you're able to offer your donations, that tax deductibility. And then the other thing is, you know, the reporting that we are going to issue you a 1099 at the end of the year. Um, we are, uh, through our oversight, um, we are able to, you know, help you keep on top of um, reporting and hopefully, you know, help you to keep everything in order in terms of your own records. And then I would say the other thing is that you have the Fractured Atlas staff at your disposal. There may only be nine of us, but we are incredibly dedicated to our projects. Um, and uh, although we are not out there pounding the pavement looking for donors, we really do want to see you succeed. So we're happy to answer questions, um, weigh in on fundraising campaigns, appeals, that type of thing. Um, so those would be kind of the top things that I would say to take into consideration. Um, okay, so I see there's a few more questions here, but they seem a little bit specific to the member. Um, so I might hold off on those. Um, oh, this is a great question. Uh, what about paying yourself a salary as the project's leader? Um, so paying yourself is absolutely considered a uh, project related expense. We absolutely want to see artists paying themselves. Uh, we think you all should be paying yourself and paying, um, you know, folks that you're working with. So that is acceptable. Um, we'll likely ask, so we'll still want to see documentation if you do uh, opt to pay yourself a salary. So um, you'll want to either draft up a contract uh, or an invoice um, that uh, states how much you're getting paid and, and for what services. Of course, then that becomes income for yourself. So you would just want to think about that um, in terms of your taxes. Uh, I myself am not an attorney or a tax accountant, so I can't offer any official advice. Um, but I can say that paying yourself is certainly considered a project related expense in our view. Um, Okay, here's a question about grants. Can Fractured Atlas help me find grants appropriate to my project? That's a great question. So once you have met the grant eligibility requirement of having raised at least $1,000 or more, um, we do have a tool that we call the Grant Toolkit, um, which is a, a researched list of grant opportunities um, specific to your location and your discipline. Um, I will say, you know, uh, 
it's it shouldn't be exhaustive that it shouldn't replace any sort of research that you do yourself but we are happy to provide you with that toolkit and because it is specific to your discipline and your location you'll need to just email support at fracturedatlas.org letting us know that information and then we will um, respond to you with that toolkit um, okay do you offer any face-to-face -face or in-person meetings? Um, so we do not. Uh, we uh, do all of our meetings either over or our communication either over the phone, um, digitally or via email. Um, we serve the whole country. Um, and like I said, you know, at the beginning, we have over 4,000 fiscally sponsored projects. So uh, it's really best for us to be able to serve all of those people equitably um, to restrict our uh, meetings to digital. Um, and of course, again, with such a lean staff, it means that we can uh, really help as many people as possible. Um, Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions. I'm gonna wait a few seconds though. Okay, so I have another question here. Um, can the $1,000 in order to be eligible for grants include money earned from a gig? So unfortunately, no, that would be considered earned income and only contributed income is eligible for um, qualifying for the grant eligibility requirement. So um, it would need to be, you know, donations made to you, a grant given, a crowdfunding campaign run, that type of thing. All right, so um, as we're waiting to see if any last questions come in, um, I do want to let you know, uh, so as I said, your My Fiscal Sponsorship page is really going to be your greatest resource um, when you are approved for fiscal sponsorship. Um, but additionally, we have a really extensive knowledge base and um, a lot of webinars. Um, so we have webinars on uh, crowdfunding and we have webinars on um, uh, grant writing uh, and individual appeal letters. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, I see another question here about face-to-face -face meetings in New York City. Unfortunately, no, we do not offer face-to-face -face meetings. Um, again, we serve over 4,000 folks across the entire country. Uh, so we feel that the most equitable way to serve all those folks is to communicate either via email, via phone, um, or this way digitally via uh, webinars. Um, we, I will say, you know, if you do email us, support at fracturedatlas.org, it is our customer service pledge to get back to folks within one to two business days. So you will hear back from us fairly quickly. Ah, okay. So is um, paying for my school or studies considered a project expense? Um, I would say that that would depend on the, um, what you're uh, sponsored for. Um, I, the one thing I will keep, I will say to keep in mind is that our, all of our projects, um, th there are three things that we fiscally sponsor. So you must be artistic in nature, you must have a public benefit, and you must be nonprofit in nature. Um, so uh, applying for fiscal sponsorship so that you can take drawing lessons, 
might not be a good fit for our program, but applying for fiscal sponsorship so that you can create a mural in your hometown and you need to take a course in order to learn the specific painting technique that would potentially fall within the purview of our program. I hope that uh, helps. Mm, great question. So can you donate to your own project? We really strongly discourage folks from doing this um, for a couple of different reasons. Um, firstly, you already have the funds and you're going to, uh, by donating to Fractured Atlas or to your own project, you will be losing that 7% administrative fee. So you're automatically losing those funds. Additionally, it can potentially get very messy when it comes to tax season. If you're trying to write off the donation as a charitable donation, as well as income, as well as an expense. Um, again, I'm, I'm not an accountant or a tax attorney, so I can't offer any official advice, um, but we very strongly discourage folks from doing that. All right, well, I'm not seeing any additional questions come in. So I think I, I may have saturated all of you for this evening. Um, but if anything does come up over the course of the night or tomorrow, um, please do email us at support at fracturedatlas.org. Um, oh, here's, here's another question. Um, if my project gets rejected, can I reapply? Um, certainly. You're, you're more than welcome to reapply. I will also say that uh, we very rarely just outright reject folks. Um, more often than not, if we feel like your project is not a good fit for our program or if we're confused about something about your application, we'll reach out to you with questions. Um, very, very rarely is it just a flat out no without any sort of explanation. Um, but yes, if you were to get re rejected, you'd be more than welcome to reapply. Okay, so I'm going to start wrapping it up again. Thank you all so very much for being here with me this evening. Uh, I know it was a lot of information. So again, if you have any questions, please do email us at support at fracturedatlas.org. Our whole programs team answers that email and we'll be so happy to answer any questions you might have. Again, my name is Colleen um, and I hope to communicate with some of you soon. Uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye. Uh,